Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Tuesday, October 24th at 9.52 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Giving you a seismic update. What you're looking at is the border between Nevada and California, the Long Valley Caldera and Mono Lake area. And we're going to be discussing the Long Valley Caldera and Mono Lake area tonight. What you're looking at is the seismic activity today. And if I change that to seven days all magnitude, you can see the amazing amount of activity at low levels in the Long Valley Caldera and Mono Lake area. I think this is important because just a few days ago up in Cascadia, there was a lot of activity under Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Hood. And that has s s quieted down. It has all but stopped. But now, under the Mammoth Lakes area, Mono Lake, and Inyo Craters, the activity has increased. Now, this activity has been ongoing for years. It's not new, but this is a shit ton of activity right here at Mammoth Lakes. This would be called a seismic swarm, even at these levels. And what it shows... So first, let's get familiar with the Long Valley Caldera here. The Long Valley Caldera, east of central Sierra Nevada range, formed as the result of a huge Bishop Tuff eruption, which happened 760,000 years ago. And it's comparable. There's a view of the caldera. Look how big it is right here. So you're looking at that rim of mountains here. Now that caldera dropped in that we were just looking at with this Bishop Tuff eruption. And since that eruption, the Bishop Tuff eruption, which... Uh, happened 760,000 years ago. There have been subsequent eruptions, and that's what this post-caldera lava fill is. So this is the major eruption, the Long Valley Caldera eruption, 760,000 years ago, and this is the Bishop Tuff ash plume. And you can compare it to Yellowstone, so they're equal in size. And they're equally as active. Although I think that the Mono Lakes area, Inyo Craters, is becoming more active. This zone. And if you don't believe me, <laughs> take a look at it. This is seven days activity. Well over 100 quakes. There's well over 100 quakes right up in this area to the north. These are laying on top of each other. And if you start coming in, there are a thousand quakes here. Now, granted, they're all small, relatively speaking. But nonetheless, this is definite increased seismic swarm activity. And this is predicted going into the grand solar minimum. because of increased cosmic ray flux and the bubble muon hypothesis. And we'll get to that. Just look at the amount of seismic activity here in this Long Valley Caldera area. And then up through Mono Lake here in Mono Basin. And there's the most recent eruptions have occurred in this area, Inyo Craters, and we're going to go over the history together. And that Inyo Crater area is up in here. But that doesn't mean that there could be a new crater area forming somewhere here in any of these calderas. I'll leave you links to all this. Let's go over the Mono Inyo craters. These are the ones that are worrying me. So from Mono Lake South, there's a field of craters that have recently erupted. So from Mono Lake South, there's a field of recent craters that have recently erupted. And over here to the uh, east. There are volcanic chain of craters, domes, and lava flows in Mono County, Eastern California. And they're all different types of eruptions, man. This is a so such a unique area. It's kind of like a hot spot underneath of a continental plate, whereas Hawaii is a hot spot under an ocean plate. This is under a continental plate, and it forms all these different volcanic activities. 
geothermal, hydrothermal, cinder cone, lava, calderas, all different types of eruptions and all different frequencies and time frames. But this Inyo crater region, there's a correlation with the grand solar minimum, which is why I'm doing this video. And I located the correlation simply by researching the volcanic history of the Inyo craters. And I'll leave you links to the Smithsonian and what they talk about here in the geologic summary. But let's get to the Inyo eruptions the last 5,000 years. And this is what we're looking at. So here's Mammoth Mountain. Here's Mono Lake. Here are the Inyo craters. Mammoth Mountain, Mono, Inyo craters. And this is years before present. If we go back to the Maunder Minimum or the Mini Ice Age, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. explosive eruptions and the most and a lava flow a lava flow from the lake an explosive eruption from the lake explosive eruptions boom 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 north coulee northwest coulee ponom dome obsidian dome glass creek dome dead man's creek dome tons of steam blasts from mammoth mountain crater inyo craters so a multiplicity of volcanic events happening during the mini ice age all the way up through the Maunder minimum into the Dalton minimum here. That's increased cosmic ray flux, direct correlation. USGS interestingly puts out a warning map for a tephra flow and ash tuff in thickness for a major eruption. I'll leave you links to this. Very interesting why they have this specific area already warned out for you folks now with increased cosmic ray flux we know through science that explosive volcanic eruptions are triggered by cosmic rays and this is because a volcano is a bubble chamber and here's the abstract I'll, I'll let you read it but the muons can contribute to nucleation in the supersaturated magma as, do, as documented by many authors study, studying a bubble chamber via ionization loss. So the cosmic rays heat the magma in the subsurface. That's a simple way to put it in layman's terms. So we have a 13% increase in subsurface heating. And this is for this area right here by Long Valley Caldera. And it's estimated to go up 20% in the next year. And there's a direct correlation to explosive eruptions and cosmic ray flux. So that's why I'm doing this video. Because when I look at the area, there is a seismic swarm and another one just popped off here. So something's happening in this area because of the cosmic ray flux and the bubble muon hypothesis. There is increased seismic activity in this area. And the reason I thought it was significant is because one day, if you go to the one day, there's a lot of activity today. And that was just a heads up. This area is becoming more active because of cosmic ray flux and it will continue to increase and we are going to be documenting it. If you have any questions, lead it down in the com leave them down in the comments. I'll leave links to all this in the description box. Be safe.